I was listening to the news this morning and I heard some incredible numbers that the president is hoping to get vaccinated by early fall. And also really how long the CEO of Moderna, one of the makers of the two available CCP virus vaccines, uh, an interview that he shared with Yahoo Finance, really how long he believes that this virus will be sticking around. Now the president and the CEO both mention the virus. They both mention the vaccine. But what they're really talking about is timing. Welcome to this week's edition of Three Minutes with Mike, and I'm your host, Mike Fogerson. Three Minutes with Mike is a teaching ministry of Chester First Baptist Church, a community church that loves God, loves people, and they're trying to live like Jesus. I want you to thank, uh, I thank you for tuning in. Now let's get cracking before it starts snowing too much more. If you ask 10 people, how you doing? You might get several answers, but one common one that you'll have is this. I'll sure be glad when all this is over. And that's really the big question, isn't it? When can we stop wearing masks? When can we go back to sporting events? When can we go back to concerts and restaurants? When can we go back to school? When can things go back to the way they used to be? Well, Dr. Luke tells us how our question of when is actually reflected in the book of Acts chapter one, uh, as Jesus' followers were asking him the same question. This is what the Bible says. So when they had come together, the disciples, they were asking him, Jesus, saying, Lord, is it at this time you're restoring the kingdom to Israel? You see, they were asking the same question that we are. When? President Biden says he'll have 300 million vaccinated by when? By the end of summer, early fall. The CEO of Moderna has told us how long we can expect to have the CCP virus with us. His response, one word, forever. Again, for us, it's an issue of timing. When? For the disciples, it was the same question, but Jesus wasn't concerned about the when, and he says as much when Dr. Luke wrote, he, Jesus, said to them, it's not for you to know the times or the epochs which the Father has fixed by his own authority. You see, Jesus wasn't worried about when, and he said that knowing the when really wasn't for us to know. So if when isn't something Jesus wants us to concern ourselves with, then what do we need to know? Thankfully, the Word of God has an answer for us. And it's not about when, but about how. And it's about where. I want you to look how Jesus told his followers to live until the time came for his kingdom to be established. He said, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Jesus isn't concerned about when his followers will face their future, but rather that they face their future with the power of the Holy Ghost. Thankfully, Jesus also told us what he wants us to do while we're waiting for our time to come. The Bible says, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the remote parts of the earth. You see, we're worried about when, and Jesus wants us to be concerned about how and what. Now, I don't know when we'll reach herd immunity. I don't know when the world will open back up, and I don't know when things will get back to normal. I do know that God is wanting me to be concerned about right now and right here. He wants me to be concerned about Chester First Baptist Church. He wants me to be concerned about showing the love and grace and mercy and compassion of God to my community, forgiveness and gentleness and strength and sharing the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ right here in the 62233. Well, how do we do that, preach? Well, we do that by the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, while we're worrying about when, God's already has the answer to that question. It's on His calendar. He's called us to be the grub hub for the bread of life. He's called us to take and be Jesus into the community that we live in. We can do that by, by several ways. Asking a friend or a relative or acquaintance or a or neighbor to go to church with you, to come and be a part of the community of faith. Invite your friends and relatives and acquaintances and neighbors to come to church. Let them hear the story of how you've been changed by God. And by the way, your story of being changed by God is what's called your testimony. 
Now, putting scripture on Facebook or a bumper sticker on your whip, that's not sharing the gospel. Telling how God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him will never perish but have everlasting life, and what that story means to you, and how it changed you, and how it saved you and transformed you. And you may be saying, well, preach, I can't do that. Jesus knew that, which is why He sent us the Holy Spirit so God can do through us what we cannot do on our own. While we're worried about when stuff is going down, Jesus is telling us how and what we've been called to do. God has created a community, a group of people where they can go to grow and learn about how and to do what God wants them to do. It's called a faith community, and that community is called church. I would love to invite you to the church that my uh, family and I go to. We go to CFBC. It's a community church. And we have in-person worship every weekend at Saturday night, 5 o'clock, Sunday morning, 1030. We would love to have you. Live band, live preaching. Uh, it's a great time, a great experience in the community of faith. Uh, we pray that uh, maybe you'd come this weekend. Uh, this weekend, Brother Ridge Fogerson will be in our pulpit sharing with us a, a message that God has laid on his heart. We ask that you would consider supporting this ministry with your prayers. And secondly, maybe even consider giving online at chesterfbc.org. You can give confidently and securely online, knowing that whatever resources you entrust this church with, the money will stay here. The resource will stay here in the uh, 62233. Thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you this weekend at CFBC.